Gentlemen of the jury, I cannot swear that certain motions pertaining to the business in hand, if I may call it an expression, had not drifted across my mind before. My mind had not retained them in any logical form or in any relation to definitely recollected occasions. But I cannot swear, let me repeat, that I had not toyed with them, to rig up yet another expression in my dimness of thought, in my darkness of passion. There may have been times, there must have been times, if I know my Humbert, when I had brought up for detached inspection the idea of marrying a mature widow, say Charlotte Hayes, with not one relative left, relative left in the white grey world merely in order to have my way with her child, Lo, Lola, Lolita. I am even prepared to tell my tormentors, tormentors that perhaps once or twice I had cast an appraiser's cold eye at Charlotte's coral lips and bronze hair and dangerously, dangerously low neckline and had vaguely tried to fit her into a plausible daydream. This, I confess, under torture. Imaginary torture, perhaps, but all the more horrible. I wish I might digress and tell you more of the pavor nocturnus that would rack me at night hideously after a chance term had struck me in the random readings of my boyhood, such as Peine Forte et Dure, what a genius of pain must have invented that, or the dreadful mysterious, insidious words, trauma, traumatic event, and transom. But my tale is sufficiently incondit already. After a while, I destroyed the letter and went to my room, and ruminated and rumpled my hair, and modeled my purple robe, and moaned through clenched teeth, and suddenly, suddenly, gentlemen of the jury, I felt that Dostoevsky Dostoevskyan green dawning through the very grimace that twisted my lips like a distant and terrible sun. I imagined, under conditions of new and perfect visibility, all the casual caresses her mother's husband would be able to lavish on his Lolita. I would hold her against me three times a day, every day. All my troubles would be expelled. I would be a healthy man. To hold thee lightly on a gentle knee and print on thy soft cheek a parent's kiss, well read, Humbert. Then, with all possible caution, on mental tiptoe, so to speak, I conjure, conjured up Charlotte as, possi as a possible mate. By God, I could make myself bring her that economically halved grapefruit, that sugarless breakfast. Humbert, Humbert, sweating in the fierce white light and hold at and trodden upon by sweating policemen is now ready to make a further statement kill Mo as he turns his conscience inside out and rips off its innermost lining. I did not plan to marry poor Charlotte in order to eliminate her in some vulgar gruesome and dangerous manner such as killing her by placing five bichloride of mercury tablets in her preprandial sherry or anything like that, but a delicately allied pharmacopo pharmacopoeal thought did tinkle in my sonorous and clouded brain. Why limit myself to the modest masked cares I had tried already? Other visions of venery presented themselves to me, swaying and smiling. I saw myself administering a powerful sleeping potion to both mother and daughter so as to fondle the latter through the night with perfect impunity. What? Um, the house was full of Charlotte's snore, while Lolita hardly breathed in her sleep, as still as a painted girl child. Mother, I swear Kenny never, ev never even touched me. You either lie, Dolores Hayes, or it was an incubus. No, I would not go that far. So Humbert the Cubus schemed and dreamed 
and the red sun of desire and decision, the two things that create a life world, rose higher and higher, while upon a succession of balconies, a succession of libertines, sparkling glass in hand, toasted the bliss of, a, of past and future nights. Then, figuratively speaking, I shattered the glass and boldly imagined for I was drunk on those visions by then and underrated the gentleness of my nature, how eventually I might blackmail, now that is too strong a word, move male big haze into letting me consort with little haze by gently threatening the poor doting big dove with desertion if she tried to bar me from playing with my legal stepdaughter. In a word, before such an amazing offer, before such a vastness and variety of vistas, I was as helpless as Adam at the preview of early Oriental story history, mirrored in his apple orchard. 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 And now take down the following important remark: the artist in me has been given the upper hand over the gentleman. It is with a great effort of will that in this memoir I have managed to tune my style to the tone of the journal that I kept when Mrs. Hayes was to me but an obstacle. That journal of mine is no more, but I have considered it my artistic duty to preserve its intonations no matter how false and brutal they may seem to me now. Fortunately, my story has reached a point where I can cease insulting poor Charlotte for the sake of retrospective verisimilitude. Wishing to spare poor Charlotte two or three hours of suspense on a winding road and avoid perhaps a head-on collision that would shatter our different dreams, I made a thoughtful but abortive attempt to reach her at the camp by telephone. She had left half an hour before and getting low instead I told her, trembling and brimming with my mastery over fate, that I was going to marry her mother. I had to repeat it twice because something was preventing me for, from giving me her attention. Gee, that's swell, she said laughing. When is the wedding? Hold on a sec, the pup. That pup here has got hold on my sock. Listen, and she added she guessed she was going to have loads of fun. And I realized as I hung up that a couple of hours at that camp had been sufficient to blot out with new, impression, with new impressions the image of handsome Humbert Humbert from little Lolita's mind. But, uh, but what did it matter now? I would get her back as soon as a decent amount of time after the wedding has had elapsed. The orange blossom would have scarcely withered on the grave, as a poet might have said. But I am no, I am no poet. I am only a very cons conscientious recorder. After Louis had gone, I inspected the icebox, and finding it much too puritanic, walked to town and bought the richest foods available. I also bought some good liqueur and two or three kinds of vitamins. I was pretty sure that with the aid of these stimulants and my natural resources, I would avert my any embarrassment that my indifference might incur when called upon to display a strong and impatient flame. Again and again, resourceful Humbert evoked Charlotte as seen in the rare show of a manly imagination. She was well-groomed and shapely, this I could say for her, and she was my Lolita's big sister, this notion perhaps I could keep up if only I did not visualize too realistically her heavy lips, her heavy hips, round knees, ripe bust, the coarse pink skin of her neck, coarse by comparison with silk and honey, and all the rest of that sorry and dull thing, a handsome woman. The sun made its usual round of the house as the afternoon ripened into evening. I had a drink, and another, and yet another. Yin and pin pineapple juice, my favorite mixture, always doubled my energy. I decided to busy myself with our unkempt lawn in petite attention. It was crowded with dandelions and a cursed dog, I loathed dogs, had defiled 
the flat stones where a sundial, sundial had once stood. Most of the dandelions had changed from suns to moons. The Jing and Lolita were dancing in me, and I almost fell over the folding chairs that I attempted to dislodge. Incarnating zebras. There are some eructations that sound like cheers, at least mine did. An old fence at the back of the garden separated us from the neighbor's garbage receptacles and lilacs, but there was nothing between the front end of our lawn, where it sloped loped it sloped along one side of the house and the street therefore i was able to watch with the smirk of one about to perform a good action for the return of charlotte that tooth should be extracted at once as i lurched and lunged with a hand mower bits of grass optically twittering in the low sun i kept an eye on that section of the suburban street it curved in from under an archway of huge shade trees, then sped towards us down, down, quite sharply, past old Miss Opposite's ivied brick house and high sloping lawn, much trimmer than ours, and disappeared behind our own front porch, which I could not see from where I happily belched and labored. The dandelions perished. A reek of sap mingled with the pineapple. Two little girls, Marion and Mabel, whose comings and goings I had mechanically followed of late, but who could replace my Lolita, went toward the avenue from which our long street cascaded, one pushing a bicycle, the other feeding from a paper bag, both talking at the top of the sunny voices. Leslie, old Miss Opposite's gardener and chauffeur, a very amiable and athletic negro, grinned at me from afar and shouted, re-shouted, commented my gesture that I was mighty energetic today. The full dog of the prosperous junk dealer next door ran after a blue car, not Charlotte's. The prettier of the two girl, of the two little girls, Mabel, I think, uh, shorts, halter with little to halt, bright hair, a infant by punk ran back down the street, crumpling her pa paper bag, and was hidden from this green goat by the front page, by the front page of Mr. and Mrs. Humbert's residence. A station wagon popped out on the leaf shade, leafy shade of the avenue, dragging some of it on its, on its roof <laughs> before the shadows snapped and swam by an idiotic pace. The sweat-shirted driver roof holding with his left hand and the junkman's dog tearing alongside. There was a smiling pause and then, with a flutter in my breast, I witnessed the return of the blue sedan. I saw it glide downhill and disappear behind the corner of the house. I had a glimpse of her calm pale profile. It occurred to me that until she went upstairs she would not know whether I had gone or not. A minute later, with an expression of great anguish on her face, she looked down at me from the window of Lowe's room. By sprinting upstairs, I managed to reach that room before she left it. <laughs>